Hi, I'm Bake Open. You're watching Rap Learn. In a few minutes, you'll be watching my interview with Ruby Ibarra. You might know her. She was in Rap Learn Live Jam last year. But today on Rap Learn Talk, we'll be talking about her music and her work in biotech. So, I hope you enjoy this interview as much as I enjoyed talking to Ruby. And insert interview here. So, hi, Ruby. Thank you for giving us time. I know you're very busy. So, but how have you been so far? Hi, Bea. First, I want to say it's nice to see you. Um, <laughs> first of all, congratulations to the whole Rappler team. As um, I'm hoping everyone is aware, A Thousand Cuts is out. I, I couldn't be here without prom helping to promote that. So, for everyone tuned in, please support You know the entire Rappler team. Um, support Maria Ressa. Um, they've been doing such great work with their journalism and A Thousand Cuts is finally out in the world. So please watch it if you haven't yet. Um, and to answer your question, I've been, I've been okay. I think I'm just like everyone else right now in the midst of this pandemic, um, just living it day by day and trying to remain um, optimistic. Great. Okay. Because you mentioned A Thousand Cuts also, can you tell us a little about the song that you you wrote it for the movie you you produced it for the movie like how did you get involved in the first place so this is actually a pretty interesting story um mm -hmm. i've known of of course maria ressa because of the work that she's done with journalism and specifically with rappler and so you know from a distance i've been such a big fan of hers um i've admired her because of everything that she represents um you know when i think about a uh, Filipina who's resilient, a Filipina who's a true warrior and a, a, a person representing the people. Um, she's the first person that comes to mind. And I think that she's a great example of what it means to really lead and to be fearless. And so when me and my band, the Balik Bayans, visited Manila last year, um, we got to perform at the Rappler offices. And <laughs> That happened to actually be the same morning that we were leaving back to San Francisco. Yeah. We were able to get uh, squeeze it into our schedule. Um, we got there in the morning time. And I remember we were in the middle of recording. It might have been the, the last song of our set. And from the corner of my eyes, like using my peripheral <laughs> vision, I see Maria Ressa there and um, Ramona Diaz. Right. And I remember thinking, OK, Ruby, you have to not forget your lyrics. Just keep rapping. Don't, you can look later. You can turn your head later. And um, it was just, you know, a surprise. And I think also fate, as right. you know, a lot of people, you know, call instances like that, where someone that you know you're you're such a big fan of and you're inspired, um, inspired of, all of a sudden appears in in your very same space. And I think you know, meeting her that day, meeting her, and. Um, Ramona, where it was just a blessing because since then, um, I think they they remembered my name and they remembered my music. So when it came to um, them wrapping up the the documentary film and looking for a piece of music to put uh, during the credits, um, they reached out to me last December. And um, I think initially they wanted to use one of my, my previous songs and... Um, I think it was us specifically yeah. that uh, I did imagine Ramona, I was I was gonna say yeah Ramona asked for and then um, I think it might have been also Ramona who suggested I she she mentioned we have five days um, we need this song are you able to create a new song within five days and of course you know here I am talking to the the great talking to two legends and um, I'm like yeah of course I, I can make that happen and this was like the last week of December um, leading up to New Year's Eve. And I remember um, contacting my bandmate that very same night after we got off our phone call. And I told him, look, I have a song that I need to, to finish within five days. Can you please help me out? So he created the instrumental for that track. I wrote the lyrics. Um, I also reached out to my friend who is Anne One, and she does the beautiful, amazing singing in the song. Right. And we were able to send it back to both Maria and the team um, within, you know, the, the 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 time frame that they had. So I'm I'm very glad we we made the deadline. I got to be with them too during the Sundance Film Festival um, early this year. So it, it was just it's just been such a great journey and it's such a great ride and um, truly a blessing to be able to work with them. Right, because you mentioned the Rappler Live Jam from last year, and then I remember the first time I watched. A thousand cuts. I I already knew that you you wrote a song for the documentary, but I didn't I didn't hear it up until that point. 
So I think when the credits started rolling, I heard the song and I was like, oh my God, wait long. It, it felt like full circle almost. Because I still remember, I vividly remember the moment that um, you met Maria and Ramona that day. So it was just, it was surreal a little. And I think I cried like more than once after oh. <laughs> the song. Because you mentioned like, um, you know, Filipinas or like women pioneering and uh, like you might downplay this this but I think in a lot of ways you yourself you're you're a pioneer or at least you're pushing the envelope um, in terms of in terms of the space you're carving out um, in this world because like you are in two fields that are generally dominated by men um, obviously music uh, rap hip hop it, it's a very male dominated sphere like. And yeah. you're a scientist. Um, actually, there, there was this story that came out recently um, that dived a little more into your day job that a lot of people might not actually be aware of. So w- what is it that you do? And like, tell us a little more about it. Um, so first, th- thanks for bringing that up because now everybody knows. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> So I I work for a company that's done a multitude of things within biotech field. Um, But this year in particular, we've been helping towards, you know, COVID-19 test kits, um, as well as doing work towards the development of a COVID-19 vaccine. Um, I don't think I've ever particularly made this part of my life a secret. Mm -hmm. I think I've mentioned it before at events, interviews, or even my social media. Um, But of course, my audience follows me, you know, for, for my music. So a lot of them weren't aware of my job and more so I think the fact that I still even have a nine to five job. I think right. most people will think that I'm a full time musician because they see me right. traveling and doing shows. Um, but I really haven't been. I, I've been doing both music and my full time job at the same time for the last um, for, for as, lo- as long as I've been doing music. And the reaction has been humbling. And I'm, I'm just so happy for the kind words and support that I've gotten from the community. Um, and and then being able to see you know other my other interests and other facets of my life, right? What what's a typical day for you like like in terms of both your nine to five, both your day job and also like music? I, I wouldn't say is it is it something that you do on the side or is it something that's fully that you do at the same time? That's a great question. Um, I would say I do music at the same time for sure. Oh, I, I think a typical day at work for me in a lab is, you know, fully gowned. I'm in my PPE. I have my my lab coat on, my glasses, and I, I run, you know, quality control testing on different DNA um, using this method called PCR. I won't, I won't get too too much into that. <laughs> I don't want to bore you, um, you know. But I, I run these tests on a daily basis, and we work with various researchers. Researchers, and after I finish my shift, you know, I, I go home. I because of COVID nineteen and um, just the chaos of this year, um, I find myself the, the very first thing that I do when I get home is um, I go straight to the shower, put my clothes, you know, in the laundry basket, and just making sure that I'm clean. Because um, even though we're working with assays that have you know to have to do with coronavirus. The fact that I'm also at work, working full time, uh, surrounded by coworkers, I'm, I just have to remain mindful about that. You know, the pandemic has never gone away and has never stopped, and it, you know the virus is still very real and it's still very much affecting and impacting our community. So I just have to take those extra precautions. And um, after I take a shower, I, I do interviews like this that I'm, I'm doing right now. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit more about your your career in science. Like, how did that start? Like, w- how old were you, I guess, when you realized that you wanted to be a scientist? You wanted to work in science? Um, I was very young. Um, I think in elementary school is probably when I first began my interest in science. I mean, I've always been a big nerd. Um, since I was a little kid, science has always fascinated me. Um, I remember being in elementary school, you know, when you had to do those projects and share with the class and the teacher what you wanted to be when you grow up. And for much of my childhood, my dream job was always to be a doctor. Um, specifically, I wanted to be a pediatrician. Um, that was like my goal, my, my ultimate goal as a kid. And I gravitated to science because for me, it's the study, you know, that explains how the world works. And I was a very, and still am a very curious person. Um, 
you know, whether it's physics that explains matter and energy or biology that explains living organisms or my line of work that I'm doing, which is chemistry, where it gets down to, to you know, the small substances that make up everything that we see and we can't see. Those are all very much things that have always interested me and um, has fueled my curiosity. Right. I always ask this um, to artists who have day jobs or who have jobs outside of music. Uh, is science to you an escape from music or, or is music an escape from science or is it something that to you coexists naturally? Like it's not an escape from each other. That's an interesting question. Um, and I haven't really thought you know too deeply about that. But um, when, when I think about it right now, I think they that they do coexist because those are two things that I'm interested in equally. Um, but I, I'm not gonna, of course, I'm gonna be completely honest and say that um, when it comes to music though, there's something different about it that pulls me and has you know a, a certain energy that, and a certain quote unquote escape that I feel like working a job and working um, within science can't necessarily fulfill. Um, I still get a certain, um, or a different type of um, fulfillment when it comes to writing lyrics, recording songs, and just being face to face and having that human interaction when I'm performing and doing live shows. Um, as much as I love science and I have that, in that deep interest in it, I think that my calling and my true passion really lies in music. Right. Okay. As someone who is not a scientist and, and not a not a musician, not an artist at all, like I would imagine both disciplines, both both jobs, both things require immersion, right? Like it's not like you can just jump from one thing or and and, and into another, like within a span of a few minutes. Like how do you do both? Like how do you balance? the two things at the same time? That is a question I ask myself all the time. <laughs> um, and to be completely honest, um, coming into this year, I remember you know, leading into, as I mentioned earlier with the sharing a thousand cuts and working on that at the end of last year, I really had a lot of things planned um, for my career this, this year. And I was almost to the point where um, I felt like it was time for me to to explore, you know, the possibility of pursuing music full time, and I almost like, you know, let that that part of of my career go, um, working in in biotech. Um, but of course, because of this year, um, it's I feel like it's more important than ever to be working in that field, and it actually gave me a different perspective of the type of work that I do, and how I balance the both is I, I feel like it's really just a challenging, a big challenging. Balancing, balancing act every single day, just like with anything else in life. When you have multiple things that you love, I think you learn, you really learn how to make time for each. Um, but for me, I mean, you're correct. It really does require a sense of immersion, um, whether, you know, I'm working um, at a lab or I'm in the studio after work. Um, I need to have that 100% focus because those are two things that I'm not only passionate about, but two things that I feel like I have to give my 100%, otherwise um, a, not only affects my work, but also affects other people um, if I'm not able to give my all. Um, and to, to, to give a, I guess, I wanna give a specific example of uh, times where I've had to kind of balance the two is, you know, at work, I could be there doing, fulfilling an eight hour shift. Mm -hmm. And then um, for whatever reason it may be, I, I have to do interviews in the daytime. I remember there's been a lot of times where I, I do my work and then I, I run to the parking lot, I get into my car <laughs> and then I do a radio interview in my car. Right. I go back to work, finish up whatever I was working on, answer emails or have my headphones on and rehearse my lyrics while I'm like pipetting, pipetting <laughs> in the lab. It's just being able to, um, to juggle things and prioritizing, managing my time wisely. Um, I'm not gonna say that it's easy. It's always been you know, a difficult challenge, but um, it, it's been fulfilling for me so far. How does this feel for you, especially because they, you, you, your music speaks of societal conditions? And I think you come from a very unique perspective uh, because you know, your, your music talks about societal issues, societal conditions, and your work now like more than ever, like you mentioned, it, it's, I mean, like, 
I don't know if you consider yourself a frontliner in 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 in, in as, as we try to handle um the pandemic. But how where 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 is your mind? Like, what's your in which headspace are you in right now? You know, but I can't imagine like how you process this pandemic given the the background that you have um, and the two jobs that you balance. I actually don't know what headspace I I am in <laughs> right now, um, just because of you know the the nature of how this year has been, you know, with a lot of uncertainties, and right. that uncertainty it permeates both in my um, you know my personal life, like just being a human being right now in the midst of a pandemic and being uncertain whether I can contract the virus or you know my family and friends can contract the virus. And then me being a musician and having that uncertainty of how is my career going to look like after this? Um, how are live shows going to, to shift? How is the music industry going to be impacted um, after all of this? So, um, you know, I, I find myself um, entering, I guess, entering different headspaces, um, you know, with, with these last four or five months. Um, but to answer your question, um, I... It, like, like I mentioned earlier, it's really, really given me a different perspective um, on not just the work that I do um, in, in the lab, but also a different perspective on life and me realizing that everything that I used to think was important isn't necessarily, you know, obviously that important anymore because those things aren't really part of my everyday life anymore, like touring, um, doing live interviews. Um, I think if anything, I've learned how to adjust and to, you know, pivot and learn how to go with the flow and be, just be present in the moment and learn to accept, uh, most importantly, that it's okay to, to not know what tomorrow looks like. Right. Um, another thing that I've always been curious about, you, you're not afraid to be outspoken on social media or, or, or on, on the stage. Um, that's not... At least in the Philippines, I think a lot of artists are still coming to terms with the platform that they have and the power, the, the, the potential power that they have when they do make a stand or that they're allowed to make a stand, if that makes sense. Um, I'm not sure, uh, bigger picture how it is in the, in the U.S., but like, why is it important for you to actually make your opinion or make your stand clear on social media? Before I answer that question, I do want to make a note that um, I, I recognize that the artists in the Philippines are under different circumstances than right. I am. Um, as we as we both know, um, you know there there are laws now that you know prohibit right. people from speaking about certain things, and I'm cognizant of that, of course. And I think knowing that has made me want to speak out even more, especially right. this year. Um, I'm not afraid to be political because I think the mere fact that I'm Filipina. The fact that I'm Filipino is already a political identity. You know, my right. very existence is born out of Spanish colonization, U.S. colonization, imperialism, and the list goes on. And coming from this sort of history, I think it's only necessary for me to talk about these things. You know, being Filipino is complex and being Filipino American specifically brings another layer of complexity to that identity. And I remember growing up trying to find a sense of belonging and trying to understand who I was and where I came from. And now in the present tense, um, as we both see in the Philippines and the US, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done and a lot of discourse that need to be had um, because there are still a lot of things that is that are impacting people's freedoms, that are impacting people's rights. And um, I feel like I would be doing my platform and my music um, a disservice if I didn't use use it to tell mine and my people's stories. Right. Okay. Um. So you, I think you already mentioned this a little bit earlier, but like, obviously, twenty twenty, the past five months, like a total shift in in everyone's life, in in how the world will be functioning. So, um, how do you think everything, like everything that's happened, how will it affect your music? Because I, I I read that you're working on another album. Um, I'm not sure if that's like if it's a it's it's been constantly a work in progress or if it was something that you uh, would have wanted to sit down and, and like just focus on you know like seclude yourself from the world. But like, how how do you think all of this will impact the music that we can expect from you in coming months or the 
coming weeks or whatever. I've been thinking about this a lot. This is what keeps me up late at night. I'm <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, thinking about um, this year, especially, you know, with, again, with, re with regards to the pandemic, it's shifted everything, you know, from our personal matters to industries and jobs across the table. And specifically the entertainment industry, artists, musicians, actors, they've been impacted really badly as we see, you know, um, Hollywood is still closed over here in the US and I'm sure in the Philippines, um, there's probably limited production um, going on, I'm assuming. Um, and so it's just really hard to find work for a lot of artists who were, you know, dependent on major labels or these bigger platforms. And so I, I found myself kind of taking um, or revisiting my past in a sense where I now find myself posting more, um, you know, live performances on on YouTube or online. And um, you know, I, I I grew up watching a lot of the the YouTube, the start of the YouTube era. Um, you know, people singing in their bedroom. I mean, I did that at the start of my career. Right. You know, I had a mic set up, and that's what I find myself doing right now. And I think that's where music is headed. Where, you know, it's more it's more in the artist's hands now um, in terms of the content that they get to create and how they get to push it out. And I think in a sense that does give artists more of a liberty and a freedom to be able to create the work that they, they want to do without um, having that middleman there anymore. Um, so that's the good thing. Um, and as, as we both know, as, as what we're doing right now, everything has shifted to virtual. So um, again, like I mentioned earlier, it's just a matter of learning how to adapt and learning to accept that, um, you know, things are changing and um, recognizing that it's okay to evolve with that. Right. What's next for you? Like, I know for a lot of people, life is on pause or in, 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 a, in a loop, but, but what, what's next for you musically, um, even in your career in biotech? Like, how do you, where do you see yourself in the coming months or coming years even? In the coming months, I see myself at home, um, relaxing in my pajamas. <laughs> in the in the next, hopefully, in next year. Um, well, I I've been working on my sophomore album. I know you you briefly asked earlier. Um, you right. know how has like I guess the the music process kind of shifted since the pandemic. Um, and so I wanted to share that I started making this sophomore album around September of last year. And what I did was I took a lot of my musician friends, um, members of my band and other musicians, and I rented a bunch of Airbnbs and we'd spend weekends making music, live music there. And that's how we came up with a lot of the instrumentals for the next album. And I remember when Shelter in Place was mandated here in California, it was um, the beginning of March. The weekend before, I was still hanging out with my bandmates. We were um, at one of their, one of my, the bass player's uh, studio, home studio. And, you know, we were like, see you, see you guys next weekend. And in the middle of the week, um, they, they tell us um, only um, essential workers are allowed to go out. All businesses will be closed. And all of a sudden, you know, this pandemic became something very real and tangible for us, where it wasn't just something we saw on TV, but was part of our lives. And so that definitely shifted, you know, the process of making the album. And um, thankfully, again, because of the internet and these virtual platforms, I've been able to still continue to, to make the album by, you know, having sessions on Zoom where I'll be with my bandmates and um, they'll be playing the, their melodies live while, while I'm there helping curate that with them. Right. And um, yeah, so I've been working very closely with um, different musicians for the next record. Um, I'm also trying to evolve. Um, as a storyteller and a creator, and I've been trying to write in other mediums outside of music. Um, I can't really announce that yet, but because they're still in progress, but they'll be announced and released soon. And of course, again, everyone, please support um, and watch the docu film A Thousand Cuts. Oh, right, it just started in the US. Oh, US. Oh, cinematic for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I think I'm not sure if Amanda asked you this the last time that you were on Live Jam, but. I, I, I'm thinking the answer might shift, especially because of what, what's been happening around the world. But like, why do you do what you do? Like everything that you do, music and your daytime job. I think um, like what you said, I am pretty sure that my answer would have been different last year, um, mm -hmm. specifically when thinking about my day job. Um, 
if you were to ask me last year why why I am part of science, it would have been me talking about my interest in it since I was a little kid. But now if you were to ask me why I do that that work is because it's it's important and I'm trying to contribute any way that I can to help, you know, society move um and and to to keep going and and to help as much people out there. I mean, if if I can help people um if I can help by working at a company that's working towards the development of a vaccine, like if I can help people that way, um, I, I would feel um, you know, satisfied. And if I can help people through lyrics by um, creating songs that reminds them of their experiences or um, makes them come to terms with their identity, um, that is also very fulfilling for me. So I, I do find um, you know, the, the reasons why I do science and why I do music, um, it might seem very different um, on kind of like a, a, a you know, from, from a brief perspective, but if I, if I delve deeper in thinking about it at the end of the day, why I do both is um, I'm hoping to contribute by helping people. I was gonna say that you're in a very, you're lucky to be able to contribute to society or or, or, or tangib- more tangibly like help people through two means, like through music and through your science. Thank you so much for your time. I hope to see you in the Philippines. I'm not sure when that's going to happen, but I hope to see you again at the Rappler office for a musical performance this time, next time, if that's possible. In the coming years. I hope so too. I, I I was supposed to go there again this year, um, but of oh. course plans fell through. But I really hope that you know um, things are gonna look better hopefully next year, and I, I hope I can go back home and visit. Okay. I'd love to to visit the the Rappler Studios again. I know. Thank you again. Thank you, Bea. And that has been Rappler Talk with Ruby Ibarra. Follow Rappler for more interviews with people from politics, business, tech, entertainment, lifestyle, sports, everything. And follow Rappler's podcasts. We are on Spotify, we're on SoundCloud, we're on iTunes, and wherever else you want us. This has been Bea Kupin. Thank you for watching. Bye.